Hi guys, uh, it's uh, Paul aka Fran from Rootstam and we've got another painting video for you. This is going to be part of the Patriarch series, there's going to be three videos in total. This is part one, this is Magnus the Red. Um, nice looking forward world figure uh, with a very, very ornate base that this is going to, um, no, this is going to be lovely for airbrushing. Um, we're going to be starting off, of course, by priming the figures. Make sure that you wash resin, even if it's not from Forge World. Just always give it a wash, regardless. In some slightly warm, normally with a washing up liquid, sort of soapy water, that'll get rid of any sort of uh, mold release and won't uh, allow, won't, won't have that bit where your paint likes to just suddenly peel off from the model. Um, I've sprayed it all with black spray paint. I use Games Workshop's Chaos Black, but you can use any if you want to use a primer, you can do. And we're going to start by pre shading. This is something I don't normally do that often, but with some of the bigger figures I'm going to, especially with metallic colours. Uh, so we're going to pre shade uh, the model. I've got it down in four parts. We've got the ostentatious base, uh, we've got the main figure itself, which is pretty much built up except from his cape, because we know we need to airbrush the cape and it's easier to do it off, off the figure than it is on and I've got his head separately because that's always easier to be able to paint the head and anything behind the head um, when they're of course they're separated these are on cocktail sticks I've put a small hole in the figure and then I've, I have glued it on but with it being a wood cocktail stick it will snap off quite easy right so the first colour we're going to be using is Dawnstone and then we're going to be moving up to uh, Administratum Grey for the shading. That's just going to be done with an airbrush. I'm going to pick a distance and we're going to hit it randomly. These I'm going to hit with random spikes of colours because that's supposed to be magic. When I come to do it, then of course it should give it a nice little bit of shading. Um, the face I'm not going to highlight. I am going to highlight the cape, so to more towards the bottom and the top. And then here, the light source is going to be around the hand because that's where he's casting the magic. So, of course, it's mainly going to be focused on that point. So, we're going to start off by just airbrushing little bits of Dawn Stone. This is going to be our first sort of layer of pre shade. I'm just putting that into it. I didn't really think about what areas I was actually putting it into on the, uh, the base. It was mainly to try and highlight and make sure that any once I've done the magic look, then it'll look even better. Um, as I said before, it's going to be concentrated around the hand, so I focused around the hand it's, itself, and then of course just feathered it out with circular motions from the edge. I apologise that <laughs> I'm at the top of the actual camera. Unfortunately, that does happen a lot in this video. Some reason I seem to miss all my markers on the cape. I just did the usual, and then of course, just a little bit of uh, the feathering on the face. Next up is Administratum Grey. Uh, I'm not going to go up to white because white can sometimes be an absolute pain, so I'm just heavy concentrations of the Administratum Grey will suffice for what we need to do on this. Again with the hand, it's just a main kit. It was very limited on the hand itself. Now I'm going to airbrush uh, Retributor Armour all over the armour panels. Do be very careful not to get it onto the skin if you can help it. I know airbrushing sometimes you will get a little bit. I mean I did under the arm there as well. But try to keep try and keep it as neat as you possibly can.
I'm going to use Green Stuff World Psychotic Illusions Color Shift Paint on top of the gold. Normally you're supposed to put it on top of black, but this is going to give it like a hybrid of like a goldy brass. There's a lot of figures, a lot, especially the um, Pit Primark figures that are... I keep wanting to say Patriot. Primark figures uh, that are in gold armor. So it becomes incredibly boring, so I thought I'd just try and do a bit of a twist by using some of the color shift paint from Green Stuff World. I'm using another color shift, Emerald Gateway. I'm doing that because um, the character itself is quite... I'm painting the feathers. So we're going to get a nice transition of two different colors on these feathers. He is Tanishan, he is a magic user. The best way of putting it, I know it's psychic powers, but I'm trying to keep it so that he's got a little bit more of a, a mystique and a mystical look about the actual figure, rather than it just being a plain, oh, it's gold armor with a red skin. Onto the base, uh, Carrick Stone is now being put onto the base bits. I also do this bit as well on the Magnus base. Uh, this is because, of course, the base in that... This is a commission. It is part of uh, Mills, if you've seen him on the channel. Uh, it is part of his army. Um, so I've already done... Because I've already painted some of Mills' stuff with that type of base in. So I'm basically just going across the whole entire base, picking out any of the rocks that I find, including the ones in the swirls. Then, after I've done um, the character stone, it's your Shabti Bone. That's been layered on top, so that's just going to give it a bit of a highlight. Uh, I'll do that again on here. Have you noticed as well that I'm keeping where the damage areas are? I'm trying to be as light as possible, just to try and keep those as dark as I possibly can. Now I did a video about this not long back, actually when you airbrush, sometimes you can dry brush the original colour that you've used over the top because the airbrush creates it really thin, so it tends to be a touch off what the actual bottle colour is, so if you dry brush it on top, you can get a very nice look of an edge highlight, um, which is what I did with the basin. Now I'm going to prep the cape for the, uh, the white that I'm going to be putting on. I am going to use an airbrush, but because I want it to, I don't want all the airbrush to go everywhere. I'm just basically painting it with administratum grey, uh, including all the little recesses. And then I'm going to paint the skin with Rhinox Hide. If I want to do a really, really dark red, which is what his skin's going to be, this is the base that I use. I always use a, a like a really, really dark brown base, which has got a bit of a red hint to it. Now next I'm going to be putting some corn red. This is just uh, layering and then of course leaving the darker brown in the recesses. On the body I'm going to try and go in one direction. Uh, this creates a, a look of muscle or musculature uh, actually on the figure. Um, I learned that from, I can't remember where, but somebody actually told me that the best thing to do is to do that. And then I'm going to put some Evil Sun Scarlet. If you can notice in the left, it's actually through a wet palette, so this is quite a thin bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, just to try and make it more translucent, so we can get a, uh, a bit of a deeper recess. Not a recess, a deeper colour, as you can see from there. That does look like quite a dark red. Make sure that that Evil Sun Scarlet is quite thin, so it becomes translucent. Then I'm going to use the same Evil Sun Scarlet getting out all over the hair, but this is not. This is quite thick. Um, I'm trying to get it over if I can in one coat, sometimes you do need two, um, but of course Magnus the Red has red hair as well, um, so we're going to be doing something with this a little bit later, but at the moment we're going to coat it all in that Evil Sun Scarlet. As you can see, Caribou Crimson now all over the hair. Uh, this will create another type of red, uh, so this is going to be creating a red that's just recessed by the ink wash, and it's quite a simple procedure, uh, but it's going to make it look different from his skin. Onto the cloak, we're going to be hitting it with white. I'm trying to be as uh, delicate as I can, and as you can see, I'm, I'm airbrushing away from the feathers, so I'm not going to catch any of that. When it comes to cloaks, I don't like you doing hand painting 
Um, it's got to be done by airbrush for me for personally uh, to make it look as nice and as good as it possibly can. Keeping the inside of a cloak actually still black um, and that was quite a tricky bit trying to do it on top of the hood. Well it's not the hood, I'm not quite sure what to call that thing that goes across the back of a cape. It looks from a cowl that comes up. Last paint, this is Gracia. Uh, that's going over the nice little bits of tabards or purity seals, I want to call them, but I'm not quite sure if they'll be classed as purity seals on Magnus. Um, they're all just painted up with Gracia, so I can actually prep those for a bit of work using some contrast paint, and that includes the long sleeve bits. Um, some people say that those, these sleeve bits are actually part of the cape, some don't. And I'm going to now hit it with the Contrast Blood Angels Red. So that's just going to go on the little little bits that's just sticking out. I'm trying to get that again. I've got another red idea and it's going to be a third different type of red. Now, if I'm being honest with you, I paint these red and I don't like them. So I actually have to go back and change all of that apart from the two long ones, the long ones remain red, but the two smaller ones are changing to a more traditional purity steel, uh, purity steel style. And that's Gullum and Glaze, I'm just going to use that on some uh, of the uh, feathers areas. Just trying to put it into the, uh, the recess if I can. Now I'm going to do a bit of blending. So this is um, the grey and the apothecary white. And as you can see, I'm using them both pretty much at the same time because I'm trying to keep it as wet as I possibly can. Contrast paint can dry quite quickly, but it should give me a nice bit of wet blending up the horns. And then this is just the uh, wire wood, which is what I'm just doing the, uh, the bangles and the bracelets in. Now we've gone on to, unfortunately, I'm not in the camera shot. This is Doombo Brown, and for, like I say, unfortunate, I was painting his book, and then of course I hit, I painted the rest of the book, the outer trim of the book, with the, I think it's, no, Screaming Bell, and apologies for the previous bit, where I'm not actually on camera, even painting some of the change in it as well. Now I'm going to hit the Screaming Bell with the Agrax Earthshade gloss version and that includes the book as well. And the gloss version does, it does make it a lot shinier and gives it a very different texture and I'm also, because I did go around and paint some of the horn, other horn patterns with the brass as well. Now this is another colour from Green Stuff World, this is their metallic blue. Um, this is what I'm painting the as if there were like golden chains coming off but I, again I didn't want to do it gold because gold's everywhere. So I wanted to try and hint at the sort of Tanish look, and this one's the red metal colour as well from uh, Green Star, I think it's called Caesar. Um, so that's what I'm painting the back end of the, I know I'm suddenly not in short, you can just about make it. Um, I'm painting the back end of the cloak with this colour. I also go over this with a little bit of the blue later as well. As you can see, I'm going to do some of the internal sections as metallic blue, that's going to give it an Egyptian well, in my head anyway, more of an Egyptian look. Here I'm just highlighting the orange. That's all I'm doing. I'm um, just highlighting the different orange set, the red sections with a little tiny bit of the actual orange. That's it. <laughs> Nothing too complicated there at all. Now back to Psychotic Illusions being applied by a brush. You do have to layer this. Uh, because it's been applied by a brush, normally when you're doing airbrush, you're doing about three or four thin layers at a time. With this, which was just painted on the blue sections, you have to go over it again about three or four times. Now here, all I'm doing is just a little silver bits, like the little bangles, the bracelets. Uh, the silver attachments that I keep in the bits on the cloak. Um, now this is uh, <laughs> uh, I've masked off using parafilm and now I'm going to start by
by uh, using Empress Children Pink. We're going to start with the effects. So I'm being very gentle, if I possibly can. I'm going to put a little bit of the, of the magic, that's the best way of putting it, uh, just into the cracks or the recesses, you know, the little bits that separate the plates. They're going to be sprayed in there. Again, apologies that it's right at the top of the screen. I completely forgot to put markers down while doing this particular video. Um, so I've tried to zoom in as best I can. Um, this is where, again, I'm going to start putting it on the edges and it's going to start being all over. So this is where the, the main bit of the actual airbrushed colour is coming into it. So again, it's just going to start with the pink, just over the black if it can. Um, that should give nice, trans nice transitional colours for the rest of the piece. And then Tesla... Hang on, it's something blue. Techless blue, that's it, quite nice and bright. Again, apologies, right at the top. All I'm doing is kind of adding to the pink, going into various different areas, um, especially on the base as well. Just going into those little recesses, adding that blue into the pink. I know it's going to make some form of purple. We are going to add other colours to it as well. Now, in this hideous bit, I'm going to paint the staff Retributor armor, keeping the handle or the uh, thing free. And then what we're going to do with the handle is paint it with Gracia because we're going to be adding, um, as you can see, a really fine brush there. I'm going to be adding, I do actually a lot of my work with a, a small basing brush by Games Workshop. I think they can get really fine, as long as you look after them, you can get a really fine cut on those. Um, that's basically just going to be getting it ready for the next stage. And it's just wild wood uh, brown, and that's just put all over the handle. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to be totally finished with that. We will actually come to it and do a dry brush because it, it's a nice colour, but it doesn't finish it off properly. And then we've got Agroxerche gloss, which is then just put liberally all over the the weapon, uh, just to try and create the shading that I'm needing for that weapon itself. Back to Doom Ball brown. And we're just going to dry brush that onto the uh, edges of the, the yeah the wrap, and then we're going to end up putting just dry brushing a little bit of white uh, just onto. This is actually with a very old Games Workshop small dry brush because I've got a tabard in front. So the tabard in front here painted by hand, and then just finish that off with a white dry brush. Um, painting the Carrick Stone into the recesses of the book and then using some Necron Compound this is just to dry brush the edges of the gold that we've done. Now I'm just going to go over uh, over magic on the base with the Empress Children. I'm just going to dry brush that on. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it, make it quite bright. I keep adding a little bit of white at a time. Uh, I'm just trying to, I'm doing it in a direction to catch the edges. Um, and as you can see from there, I've actually repainted those bits. That's Tyrant Skull I'm dry brushing on top. That had just been basically your shabty bone, and then I hit it with Seraphine Sepia, and then dry brush that on top. This is a very old paint. This is Flesh Wash. So if you can try and find the colour, it's very dark brown. You can actually get a brown and, just, and dilute it. But this is to try and make the, um, the text. And all I do is do little bits of lines, like a dot, dash, dot, dash, or dot, dot, dash, dash, dash just lines on the script and um, that makes it look quite aged uh, and then I go back to Retributor Armor to try and finish off the red flowing bit I can't really know what to call them but they are supposed to be part of a cape or tabard that's just on the edges now here I'm really watered down to Tesla look like really watered down it's very very runny and I'm I'm dotting it into all the script that's actually across all the different bases um, just so that we can I even added a bit of white to this as well to make it really bright and this just flows in so the reason it's really running it's more like an ink and it flows into what I'm doing as you can see and it flows into the actual basing bits so that you can it will make it look a lot different and it will it will make those little bits look right there more pronounced and stand out and there he is, all done. Um, sorry to be a bit uh, haphazard towards the end there. 
Um, there was some changes made. Some of the gauntlets got changed over from blue to gold because of requests. Um, Mills is a taskmaster when it comes to painting. It's very particular. And annoying. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll never watch this. Um, I'm joking. Probably will. But yeah, the, uh, as you can see, some of the final images have come out really well. The actual overall effect, I like the fact that I could do it in stages. Keep it all separate. Because I could keep it all separate, it looked magnificent right at the end. And it made it easier for me to be able to paint it. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification button if you are wanting more. Uh, if you are wanting to actually hire me for a commission, if you go to rootstem.co.uk, um, you can um, just send me a message, tell me what you've got, and I'll be able to give you a price and a time frame on, on when I can actually complete the project. Thank you very much, guys, anyway. Um, if you are using this, trying to follow the guide, I hope you can follow it well. I have sped it up, and it did take me probably due, with drying time, probably a couple of days to be able to get through him, but I'm always doing other stuff at the same time, so it wasn't just him on his own. Well, thank you very much again. See you next time.